In this video, I'm gonna be using this pair of glasses to help you understand how you can instantly change your self-concept. Now, before we get into how to change it, it's important to understand what your self-concept is and why it matters so much. Well, first, your self-concept is simply an idea that you hold to be true. Now, it comes based on past experiences, which we'll get to later on in the video, but it sets out as a guideline or a template of how you can be in life who you can be, who you can interact with, what you can attract or can't attract, and really what you feel you deserve according to that image or idea you hold to be true. This is not an objective fact of the universe, meaning that it can be changed. The reason you hold on to these ideas to be true is because you've had past experiences that showed you that this is who you are or that were implicitly implied that this is all you could have in life. So it's a very subjective experience. Now, why is this self-concept so important and why is it critical in order for you to start attracting, for you to start creating the life and experiences that you really want? Just as I mentioned earlier, this pair of glasses is gonna represent your self-concept. Now, clean, I can look out and I can see everything nice and clear. But if, if you have experiences where you keep attracting rejection or abandonment in relationships, where no matter how hard you try to create money and opportunities, you never quite have enough or it's hot and cold situations. No matter what those outer dynamics, they're reflecting a concept you hold to be true. So let's say that as when you were younger, you were taught or shown that you're not good enough, okay? That's creating distortions and ideas on this lens of how you'll see reality. Maybe when you tried to connect, people weren't emotionally available they were a little bit absent or maybe they were abusive maybe no matter how hard you tried you just never quite measured up and you just did not feel good enough now rather than seeing the clarity of reality that which I could see with those earlier glasses now I look through and as you can see there's all sorts of distortions I'm seeing reality through the lens of my self-concept the reality I'm seeing is not objectively true. It's simply through the filters of what I believe to be true. Meaning that if there's an opportunity outside of me that's going to reflect that this person's emotionally available and I would feel good enough and I would feel loved and deserving, well, I can't, I can't experience that because I've got a lens of I'm not good enough, I'm undeserving. So with my senses, I won't be able to perceive of it. Your self-concept creates perceptional biases based on your past. Now realize, you can change this, but before we understand how to change it, we have to understand what's going on so we can start to detach that our outside reflection is who we are. It's reflecting where you've been and who you had to be to survive that early on experience. Just as I took these glasses off and I can see you much clearer, looking good today, you can do the same with your self-concept. You can start to understand and remove these distortions so that you can start experiencing and receiving opportunities that you're really wanting and the ones that I know you deserve to have. Now, who am I to tell you about how to change a self-concept? I was homeschooled until I was 16. I was so insecure, I was overweight. And as a kid, I couldn't even say the letter R. I had a major speech impediment that created a lot of insecurities and made me want to be quiet or do lots of things to get attention, but all the attention was off of me. Again, I grew up overweight, I kept finding a lot of people who are really emotionally unavailable. And I continue to think that it's what I did that created my value. So my lens of distortion, my self-concept is I am worthless unless I earn and can get the validation from that outside person. And if I do, then I can feel good enough. But in the meantime, I am worthless. I am ugly. I am overweight. I only get that which I don't want. I can never have what I really want. I'm not good enough to have it. I lack all the things I need to actually have the experiences that I want. Those are all the over and over and over and over ideas I held and I thought that were true. Now, utilizing what I'm gonna share with you in this video has completely changed the way I see myself. Letting go of those old ideas, stepping into these new ideas, being able to receive more and more attention, being able to see a reflection of my worth in life and receive it, 
that being in valued relationships, that being in more money received in easier ways. So many different ways that I see it reflected, but the thing that I did and had to learn to do was to change my self-concept. Now, right before we get into the rest of the video, I wanna share a quote with why your self-concept is so important. The quote's from Neville Goddard, and the quote says, there is no one to change but self. Realize, he didn't say, go change those people and how they feel about you. Go change that thing outside of you so you'll feel different. He said, there is no one to change but self. That self is simply your awareness. As you understand yourself more, you can start to shape and shift that self. Your consciousness and the world in which it lives is determined by the concept you hold of yourself. What determines your world, what determines your awarenesses, what determines your circumstances is your concept. It is to consciousness that we must turn as it is our only reality. If you think about a consciousness map, which I'm gonna put on the screen right now, a consciousness map is the level of lens we see the world. The more it raises, which we're gonna talk about how later in this video, the more it raises, the more you will see yourself differently, the more the lens of how and what you can see in your reality will automatically change. So let me show you now how I was able to go from a really insecure homeschool, felt like I was a loser into ultimately doing all the things I've done in life and really not letting my outside define my inside. But when I changed my inner world, that's when I saw a reflection in my outside world. If this video is resonating and you're interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, I'm offering one-on-one -on -one sessions where we'll sit down for an hour. We'll apply this in your own life. I'll help you gain more awareness so you can get conscious of what has been unconsciously dictating your life so you can start to change it. I've already worked with so many different people from all over the world who are starting to see huge changes in their life, in their relationships, in their dynamics with work and money. I'd love to help you too. So if you're interested, there is a link below. It'll take you to a form, fill it out, and I will email you. All right, you know me, we're gonna draw this out because I want you to understand this as clear as possible. The power is in the knowing, the when, and the how to apply what I'm gonna share. So first, where did this self-concept come from? It did not, I repeat, it did not come from you not liking yourself. You watching this video is a sign of self-love because you know that how you feel and those ideas that come up are not really you. That is self-love. Understand that your self-concept, if it's a lot of limiting beliefs, if it's a lot of negative uh, assumptions about yourself, they were created from a previous environment, okay? Now realize, we're not blaming or shaming the adults who were around you as a kid. No, the attention we're giving is to you, okay? We want to understand your experience so we can start to shift your perspective rather than seeing yourself from these eyes, right? This person judging you and then you believing this to be true. We're going to shift the perspective. When we do that, that's what's going to dissolve these ideas. It's going to start wiggling them, creating space for something new. Okay, so as a kid, you all had caregivers, right? Some adult that was basically there to take care of you, to keep you alive. Now, when we're children, these are your eyeball beams <laughs> looking to your adults, okay? This could have been grandparent, anything. Now, when you're a little kid, you think all the adults around you know better because wow, they're magical. They know how to do all these things, right? They drive the cars, they get the money. It seems like magic. So we think, wow, these people are pretty amazing. Uh, they know how to do the stuff we don't. We need them to survive. What does that mean? We have to fit into their world in order to survive. They know better than we do, okay? So there's a, a power imbalance. So if something goes wrong between these two people, whose fault do we think it is? Oh, we take blame, good job. So if we had an environment early on with this caregiver who maybe was emotionally reckless, maybe they're emotionally really immature, they would get home after work, they'd go sit down, they'd watch TV, okay? We think, oh my gosh, I wanna connect. Maybe you went up and said, hey, you know, like you wanna do a puzzle or look what I did. And they're like, stop, I can't handle that. God, you're just so much. Just can't you see, I need a second. And you could think, boom, shame. I feel guilty, I feel bad, I'm too much. Right? So what do you store in your self-concept? I'm too much. If I was good enough, if I was okay, they would want to connect with me. There must be something wrong with me. This is the birthplace of shame. We're not saying that this adult is a bad person. They're a human being. But can you see 
that potentially this adult did not have emotional space and they did not like what they were doing and maybe they had a lot of trauma in their life that they never got the tools to process. And so guess what? They're giving us a dysregulated, dysfunctional response because at the end of the day, they're responsible for our emotional, psychological, physical well-being. So them not showing up, them not being enough for what we need was not our insufficiency. Can you see that now with your adult mind? Now, let me give you another example. Maybe this adult was physically abusive. Maybe they said really nasty things about you, right? And what did you think? Okay, if this person's saying it, they're the adult, they, there must be truth. Now, another component to this, especially when it comes to physical or verbal violence, is that you basically have to think this person has the competency to take care of you. If the answer is no, you are doomed. So even though this person is just giving you horrific behavior, you could think it's still you. You could take that responsibility, which is not yours, so that you'll be able to believe that they can keep you alive. It literally is life or death. So you think, okay, even though this person's treating me horrendously, terribly, it's a, a realm of suffering, it must be me. I'm not worthy. Now, you did everything perfect because you had to adapt to this environment. And the only option at that time was to start taking on this, to lower, to dim your light, to fit into this world because it meant survival. That was also self-love. But what we got to get you to start understanding is the early on self-concept of yourself was only a survival. This this self-concept was rooted in self-abandonment. That learned self-abandonment was a way to self-preserve. You learned that self-abandonment means survival. That was true in 1975, in 1982, in 1991, however old you are, whenever this situation happened, that was true. This is who you had to be, but this is not who you are. Okay, so the more and more you start to understand, okay, your adult mind, okay, say this, this was five-year-old you. Do you know a five-year-old right now, right? Think of that five-year-old. Think that if me and you walked into a store and we saw that five-year-old be treated this way, these experiences, do not relive those experiences through your little eyes. We don't want to do that. We don't want to re-traumatize you and realize that trauma, that word, right? That buzzword, all it means is that at a certain point you were whole and complete, right? You were you authentically, especially at five years old. That's a beautiful thing that kids do for us. They show us who we were before we had these experiences that we've always had it. And the idea that you're separate from yourself is an illusion. But when you had this experience, you fractured from yourself in your psyche. I can't be me. I can't ask for what I want and be safe. That's going to be, that's harshness, right? Maybe I'll get in trouble. Maybe they'll disown me if I ask for too much. So I have to put my needs in my shadow. I have to be needless. Maybe I'll be the helper. Maybe I'll be the rescuer. I'll help people who are in need because I don't have needs. You did have needs, but early on you got fragmented from this outside experience. Now the trauma doesn't come from the outside. The trauma happens inside of you. Inside of you, based on this external situation, it creates a rupture. I can't be safe as my whole self, so I'll put it in shadow. So I'll create these ideas of myself, this concept I have of how I did stay safe as a kid. Can you start to see how this early on survival mechanism of your self-concept kept you safe then and now it's creating suffering. Now it's creating a prison because it's not who you really are. So again, we're gonna go back. I got a little tangential, I got it worked up for you. I want you to have everything you want. I want you to experience life that's abundant, that's fulfilling, that's happy, right? And these ideas, these vines of poison that are not really you, you can break away from. All you need to know, know what to do is how. This tremendously has changed my entire life and I deeply want this for you. No matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, that's why I get so pumped up. That's why I make these videos because I really care about you and I deeply care about your experience. And I promise you that as you learn to do this, you can liberate yourself emotionally. I had somebody help me and it completely changed my life and I really want the same for you. You. 
So when you think back, me and you are going back, we see this little five-year-old kid in the store. We see this adult being nasty and sharpened to him and saying, what's wrong with you? Why did you ask me for something? Would you see this adult as in the right and this kid being too much to ask? No. I think that we can agree that we would both look at that adult like, what is wrong with you? You are being inappropriate. You are the limitation in this situation. This child has never been too much. This child has never been unworthy. This child is beautiful, delicate, deserving, and worthy of what they need. Now, what we're doing in this situation is getting your adult logical brain, reason and logic, we're getting to re-reason on this situation so you can upgrade this self-concept. The way that you instantly, instantly, in a microsecond, change your self-concept is by shifting your perspective. As opposed to the early on taking the blame, taking another person's uh, lack of availability, lack of emotional maturity, lack of emotional capacity. As a kid, you took that to be your responsibility. And now we're giving that back, right? Now we're saying no. That shift in perspective about seeing yourself in a new way, that is what creates instant change to your self-concept. Now, it took me eight years of intense uh, shadow work to understand how to do this. I was told over and over, but I didn't quite get it, which is why I try my best to systematically show you. One of the easiest ways to do this is to start advocating for yourself. If we were in that store with that adult, what would you tell this adult? Now you can do this in the comfort of your own home. If you live alone, I highly encourage you to do this when you're, you are completely alone. Maybe it's in the car. Maybe it's when you're at home, maybe you're on a walk. But what words would you say? Back off. What is wrong with you? This is a child. This is a deserving and worthy child. This child is not causing your stress. So go take care of yourself. Go grow up. Go get the tools you need and stop taking it out on this child. What words did you not have as a kid? You never should have had them, but now you do. When you learn to speak up for this old situation, not through your young eyes, through your adult mind now saying, no, that is not okay. That is not an alignment with my values. You can start to end this, this hook of this person having the, the keys, the copyrights to your self-image. When you say no, you block out, you say that's not okay, you have a different perspective, you take back and start to embrace and caretake that child because you're being the adult that you needed as a kid. And as you do that, you will start to take back those parts of yourself that were in shadow, understanding that you are worthy and you're deserving and you no longer have to fracture from that because you can be safe in the world as an adult, learning how to caretake that inner child as you go back and you don't tell a different story. You shift your perspective of the, the meaning why that happened. It was not because of you. Starting to understand what this adult went through. And again, you don't have to blame them. You don't have to make them a bad person, but you have to understand that they were not, they did not have the tools. The environment was too small for you. It did not offer what you needed and you deserved. It was not because you were too much. The more you do this, the more you will take back and then get the keys and the copyrights to your self image. And there'll be so much more space for you to receive and experience new concepts of yourself because you're no longer anchored to the distortions and illusions and the poisons of the past. You deeply deserve this and I know you can do this. Now, so often people talk about the circumstances, right? And it's like, well, how do I go from doing this to changing my circumstances? Well, I felt the same way. It was really confusing and I did my best to create a system so that you can understand how you can start to use these ideas to change your circumstances. So this next video right here will show you in a systematic approach how you can start using what we covered in this to change your self-concept so that you can actually change your circumstances. Check it out right there. I love y'all. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the next one.